Low-lying land of Bengal is full of river, ponds, and water. And soil being the main source material, because this land is not having any stone that way. And this soil is the source of all inspiration, be it an agriculturist, or a farmer, or a clay modeler. This gives them all opportunity to find all their expressions meet out. In the dawn of the human sensibility and history, man first saw the altered state of burnt clay in the fire and thus discovered the possibility of making clay items that didn't disintegrate in the water. Exploiting the plasticity of clay, producing on an unimaginably large scale and for variety of purposes, the Indian artisans never seem to feel tired. came when this art, often termed as poor man's art, has never been just restricted to poor folks only. Covering the expensive outer surface of the brick-built temples and monuments, the village potters were called upon. Whenever there was some doubt about the durability, earthenware plaques were baked, which worked as protection against humid climate. Ochinto Kumar, the local guide. The temple is first constructed, then the terracotta plaques are fixed with lime mortar. Bishnupur was once a flourishing town and served as the capital of Malla rulers of Bengal 
from the 17th to 18th century. The most prosperous period of recorded Malla history begins with Veer Hambir, a contemporary of Akbar. Veer Hambir was the ardent devotee of Vishnu and hence the name of the capital, Bishnupur. Bishnupur is today a subdivision of Bakura district of Bengal. Terracotta temples still survive till today as a vivid reminder of the past glory of the Malla kings. The temple we see here is strongly reminiscent of the mud huts which dot the Bengal countryside. This Keshtoraya temple, built in the year 1655 AD, is also known as Jorbangla temple. It is formed of two structures of a Bengali hut type, each having a sloping roof joined together to form a single structure. Temples of Jorbangla style is a very distinctive contribution of Bengal. Medieval Bengal experienced various foreign incursions. They came to trade and lived as settlers. We find the influence of their style on the decoration. Can you see the boats with the soldiers and guns? Which is nothing but a Dutch influence. Top panel is showing Krishna Leela and down below we see assortment of figures moving with a drummer and a man with a gun. All are probably going for a hunting. We see a profusion of carvings illustrating Ramayana and Mahabharata. This could be attributed to the waning influence of Buddhism in the medieval and post-medieval period when Bengal was experiencing an upsurge of religious fervor due to Vaishnavic and Shakto revival. Not only Bishnupur, but the whole land of eastern region was dotted with thousands of brick temples resplendent with terracotta carvings illustrating the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. This Jorbangla temple is a fine and well-preserved example of the Chala style of architecture. The entire facade is covered by ornamental panels, the significant achievement of the artist being the consolidation of the panels into a single compact design. This establishing also an aesthetically valid relationship between space of the entire facade, the volume, and the size of the miniature figures of each panel. Ratnu means jewel. The temples of earlier phase 
were usually with one central tar and hence belonged to Akurotno type. Gradually, the number of tars increase, adding grace and splendor to the structure. Five massive tars placed upon a sloping roof of Bengali Chala type. This Shamraya temple, built in brick, is the oldest temple of Rothno type. It was built in 1643-44. This type of temple, of Rothno variety, can be claimed to be indigenous to Bengal. This temple is dedicated to Sri Radha and Sri Krishna. One looks and marvels at the profusion of activities that come to life on these walls. What we see is the profusion of ornamentation formed on the facades of this temple, which is one of the distinctive features of the new style of temple building developed in Bengal since 15th century. The impressive array of ornamental terracotta plaques are arranged in regular friezes. The frontal portions of the temple alternate scenes of Krishna Leela with those of battle scenes from the epics. Imagine that Krishna is playing hide and seek with the Gopinis. What could be a better place than the Ras Manch, which is a structure commonly found all over Bengal? The Ras festival on the full moon night in the month of Kartikeya is celebrated on the Ras Manch. The unique features of this Ras Manch is its pyramidical shape. It is also the oldest structure in Bishnupur. But whatever celebrations took place here are now memories and perhaps conjecture. We go now to visit the surviving descendant of the Bishnupur Malla King. This is the palace where his father and forefathers lived. But its glory has now vanished. It is impossible for him to maintain whatever remains of the palace as he is just a primary school teacher. Boitokhana dekchen, eta somaskara amader pukhe kora kum muskil hoteche karon amra 
বিশেষ করে আমি একটা ছোটোখাটো চাকরি করি একটা প্রাইমারি স্কুলের টিচার মানে নিজের সংসারকে মেনটেন করব না এই পুরনো বাড়ির রিপেয়ারিং করব হি লিভস হিয়ার উইথ হিজ ওয়াইফ এন্ড টু চিলড্রেন আমি এখন এই বিষ্ণুপুরের রাজবাড়ি বলতে একাই আমি আছি এবং আমার দুই ছেলে মেয়ে ও স্ত্রীকে নিয়ে আছি বাট ইন দি আইজ অফ দ্য পিপল অফ বিষ্ণুপুর হি ইজ স্টিল রেসপেক্টেড অ্যাজ রয়্যালটি আমরা যেখানে থাকি এই বৈঠকখানার থেকে মোটামুটি the only treasures left to him are the deities from the temples which fell to his care when most of the temples fell into disuse the dwelling of the malla kings is in ruins but the glory of the malla kings continues to live on in these mute monuments and in the ringing praises of Krishna. <laughs>